ribosomal RNA um, introduction. Ribosomal RNA is a fundamental component of ribosomes, which are the cellular machinery for protein synthesis. So uh, we have ribosomes where actually protein synthesis took place. So part of the component of ribosomal RNA, we have ribosomal, so part of the component of ribosomes, we have ribosomal RNA, which is very important in protein synthesis. And this uh, ribosomal RNA, it plays a crucial role in translating messenger RNA in protein into proteins, making it essential for cellular function. So it is important in translating the genetic code in the messenger RNA into proteins. So we have different types of RNA. We have uh, messenger RNA. So a messenger RNA is responsible for, for carrying information from the genes for production of polypeptide in the cytoplasm. That is the first thing that we need to know. So these are actually three common types of RNA. The three common types of RNA that we have. We have messenger RNA, we have transfer RNA, and then we also have uh, ribosomal RNA. So the major functions of the messenger RNA, it carries information from the genes for the production of polypeptides in the cytoplasm. So the then transfer RNA is responsible for transferring amino acids to the growing chain of polypeptides for the protein synthesis. And then we have the ribosomal RNA, which is associated with the ribosomal proteins to form ribosome. So ribosomal RNA plus the ribosomal proteins will form what you call a ribosome. And the major functions of ribosomes is for protein synthesis. So you should know that when you said ribosome, it is made up of ribosomal RNA and the ribosomal proteins that what make the ribosomes for protein synthesis. And the ribosomal RNA is highly conserved across all dimensions of life, indicating it is vital in biological processes. So it is highly conserved. It is almost or highly very uh, similar in the domains of life. And you have three domains of life, you carrier, I care and so carrier. So then uh, let's now look at the structure of the ribosomal RNA. So ribosomal RNA are composed of nucleotide that fold into complex or that form into complex three-dimensional shapes. So these structures are vital for the binding of ribosomal proteins and catalytic activity of the ribosome. So the RNA also has, it is all fold itself, it, because it of course has nucleotides, nucleotide, it has nucleotides. So those nucleotides of the ribosomal RNA, they fold themselves through non-covalent interaction to form the complex three-dimensional shapes. And these structures are vital for binding of the ribos uh, ribosomal proteins and the catalytic activity of the ribosome. So the different types of Ribosomal RNA includes 16S, 18S, 23S, and 28S. These are the different types of ribosomal RNA. 16S, what is the meaning of S? S stands for Sebeck-Bag unit. S stands for Sebeck-Bag unit. Sebeck-Bag, Sebeck, stands for Sebeck-Bag unit. Bed back units. And what is what is the role of what is the meaning of this bed back unit? Bed back unit it measures the sedimentation rate or it measures the rate of sedimentation of the ribosome. So if you have the ribosomal or if you have a pool of ribosomal RNA or you isolate your ribosomal RNA, it contains different types. There are different types of it. So to differentiate them, you need to centrifuge it. So the centrifugation will separate the RNA based on their sizes. And these sizes, that is why we have 16S, we have 18S, we have 23S, and we have 28S. So these are the different types of the, uh, uh, the different types of the ribosomal molecule or ribosomal RNA molecules. So they are differentiated based on their rate of sedimentation. 
So that is why it has 16 as the S means speed back unit, which means you the sedimentation. So you can see one very important thing that we should understand. This is a nucleus and we have nucleus and the uh, ribosomal RNA are in synthesized in the nucleus and after it's synthesized, then it will now transport itself to the cytoplasm for the protein synthesis. So let's look at the types of ribosomal RNA. So in prokaryotes, there are two types of ribosomal RNA. We have, sorry, uh, in prokaryotes, we have different types of the ribosomal RNA. We have 16S RNA, which is called small subunits. 16S RNA, this is the types of RNA. We have 16S ribosomal RNA, and it is called small units. And then we have the large unit. So we have small units and large units. So these are the types of uh, ribosomal RNA in prokaryotes. We have small units, which is system S RNA. And then we have large subunits, which comprises of 23, 23S and 5S RNA or ribosomal RNA. So these are the different types of ribosomal RNA in prokaryotes. While in eukaryotes, it also contains the small units and large units. So the small units in prokaryotes consist of 16S ribosomal RNA, sorry, uh, 18S. It's 18S ribosomal RNA molecule in eukaryotes. And then the large subunits, the large subunit in eukaryotes, it comprises of 28S, 5.8S, and 5S ribosomal RNA molecule. So these are the different types of RNA molecules that we have in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic. And each type of ribosomal RNA has unique role in ribosomes contributing to the structure and function. So you see, this is what we have in the case of these different types of ribosome. So we have 70S ribosome, and this 70S ribosome, it is actually a ribosome that is found in prokaryotes. So the 70S ribosome is divided into 30S and 50S. So the 50S, we have 16S RNA plus 21 polypeptide chain. While for the 50S, we have 5S RNA and 23S RNA plus 34 polypeptide chain. So this is what makes the small subunits of the ribosomal RNA in prokaryotes. While for the 30S, which is the, uh, so it is the large subunit of the uh, prokaryotic RNA, while for the smaller subunits of the prokaryotic mm -hmm. ribosomal RNA, it comprises of 16S RNA and 21 polypeptides chain. So then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what are the functions of the ribosomal RNA in protein synthesis? So ribosomal RNA facilitated the binding of mRNA and transfer RNA during translation. So the transfer RNA and messenger RNA must bind themselves together. So once when binding, it is actually the role of the ribosomal RNA to bring them together and facilitate the binding for the protein synthesis to take place. And it catalyzes the formation of peptide bonds between amino acid forming polypeptide chain. Remember, I told you during protein synthesis, transfer RNA, transfer it is amino acid to a growing polypeptide chain. And the chain formed between this amino acid is called polypeptide, uh, it called polypeptide chain, or you can call it peptide bond. So this peptide bond is formed by, or is actually catalyzed by the ribosomal RNA. So it's the work of the ribosomal RNA to form peptide bond during protein synthesis. So you see, this is what we have. So this is where we have ribosome. 
we have our mRNA here and we have our transparent so it is actually the role of the uh, ribosomal RNA to bring the transfer RNA and the ribosomes uh, and, and the messenger RNA together for the protein synthesis to take place. The ribosomal RNA it also acts as a ribosome, meaning that it has enzymatic activities which is essential for protein synthesis. So it is also actually one of the work of the ribosomal RNA. So, so then the next thing is biogenesis of ribosomal RNA. So ribosomal RNA is synthesized in the nucleus in eukaryotic cells. And the enzymes that catalyzes the synthesis of the nucleus in the eukaryotic cells is ribosomal RNA polymerase 1 and sorry, RNA polymerase 1 and RNA polymerase 2. So RNA polymerase 1 and RNA polymerase 2 are the enzymes that catalyzes the formation of ribosomal RNA in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. So following transcription, the, RNA, the ribosomal RNA it undergoes processing, including cleavage and chemical modification. So the processing of the transfer RNA, or sorry, of the ribosomal RNA is through cleavage and chemical modifications, that is addition and removal of some groups. So the processed ribosomal RNA then combined with the ribosomal proteins to form ribosomal subunits and this ribosomal subunit will have large ribos ribosomal subunit and we have small ribosomal subunit and we have seen them in both prokaryotic and eukaryotes. So this is how the nucleus synthesize the different types of the uh, ribosomal RNA. You can see it's from the nucleus and you have export protein was transported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. So this is how it is. We have some of the molecules that are major transporters of ribosomal RNA, like RPL and RPS. These are some of the molecules that aid the transportation of the ribosome from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. So evolutionary significance of ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA sequences are used to study evolutionary relationships among different organisms. So you can use the ribosomal RNA of one organism to trace the genetic lineage of the particular organism. So ribosomal sequences are used to study the evolutionary relationship among different organisms. Like I, as human, fish. You can use the ribosomal RNA of fish and the ribosomes of human first their genetic lineage or their common descendant. So the phylogenetic trees are usually constructed from ribosomal sequences have reshaped our understanding of the tree of life. So because ribosomal RNA is highly conserved, it serves as a reliable marker for tracing lineage and evolutionary history of every living organism. So you see this is actually the descendant we have A, B, C, A, B. So these are the organisms. So you can use the ribosomal RNA to trace their common ancestor. You see here we have different organisms. We have A, B, C. So we, we can use this ribosomal RNA to trace their lineage and evolutionary history. So what are the applications of this ribosomal RNA in biotechnology and medicine? So RNA is a key target in the development of antibiotics as many antibiotics inhibit bacterial ribosomal RNA. So there are a lot of antibiotics that are developed to inhibit the ribosomal RNA. So techniques like ribosomal RNA sequencing are used to analyze microbial communities in various environments. So understanding ribosomal RNA can also aid in diagnosis of disease caused by ribosomal targeting pathogens. So you see now, let's look at the applications of this ribosomal RNA in um, biotechnology. We can, okay, this is actually just the applications of biotechnology, but what we are after here is the role of ribosomal RNA in biotechnology and medicine. So we can use it to produce antibiotics and we can use it in disease diagnosis and ribosome targeted therapy. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, conclusion 
Ribosome is essential for protein synthesis and plays a crucial role in cells function. It is a complex structure and evolutionary conservation highlight. It is important in both predict biology and applied sciences. So ongoing research into ribosomal RNA continues to unveil it is mastery, it is mysteries, and potential application in biotechnology and medicine. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Don't forget to join and subscribe my YouTube community. See you next.